y'all. <laughs> I'm finally getting around to doing a video. I have intended to do this for the last two weeks on my day off. And what had happened was, I'm like, okay, well, I'll sew and then I'll do the video. And then I end up sewing until it's bedtime. I apologize, but here I am. I just got back from Black Mountain Yarn Shop where um, I do a crochet sit-in on Tuesday morning. And, you know, it can range from you want to learn how to crochet you've never crocheted or, you know, you need a refresher or whatever. You just need some help with a project. Um, so, if you're in the Asheville or surrounding area, that's where you'll find me on Tuesday mornings. Okay, so I'm going to do my usual randomness. You know how I do. So, I'm just going to start, well... With what's closest. So, as you know from previous podcasts, this, what was in this bag was my Ceresia sweater. So, it's still in here. I haven't worked on it for months because I wasn't happy with, and I showed it on the last podcast, but see how wide the front is? Like, it's this huge oversized sweater, and I'm just not gonna wear it. That's just that. So, but I love the way that the bobbles look in this funfetti yarn. So I found another sweater pattern with bobbles and I started it last night. I finally, I was like, that's it. I'm gonna frog it. See the bobbles? That's it. And this is a cute little cropped, uh, little boxy sweater that I'm gonna love. This, the Ceresia sweater fits more like a swancho and I just, I don't know, like it's beautiful looking, but once I saw actually how large the front panel, like it's just not. Anyway, I'm not frogging it. I'm working directly from the front sweater. So I'm just using it like it was a skein of yarn. So I'm very excited about that. What is this called? Totally left my tablet upstairs. Um. So I'll have to put a link to it in the description box because I don't remember what it's called. It's the cutest little bottle sweater. So there's that. The Christmas sweater. I haven't gotten much more done. I'm two rows. Two rows away from the the white brim of the hat. Actually, I have. I was just there last time, so I've got the meat of the hat done. And once I do the white fuzz on the hat, then I um, split for the sleeves, and then the flamingo will start. If you're if you're new, this is what the motifs for the sweater. So the hat actually sits on top of the flamingo. So once I split for the sleeves, then the flamingo. I'll start the flamingo on the body, but the hat on the sleeves, the gingerbread man is what's wearing the hat on the sleeves. So it's actually two different motifs, which is super fun. Okay, then I crocheted up a sample of this. So I have mentioned before that me and Cass, or CGCG Arms, if you don't know, have, um, I'm the sewing part of that yarn company. Cast out the yarn and I sew the project bags and the cake cups. And um, so I crocheted this sample. This is colorway will be called Black Mountain Autumn. And it's specifically for the show. I love it. I was so in love with it from the moment I saw it. So I started right away. This is a one skein infinity cowl. And I will certainly put a link to it as well. It's lovely. Lovely and fast. One skein. One and done. It was fantastic. Um, Jesse from Hooks and Coffee went to a fabric sale. I'm not sure what the situation was, but it was like a 
I don't know if they were going out of business, but it was a fiber store, so they had yarn and fabric and whatnot. So I'll just give you a quick glance of, they had some really pretty fabrics for super cheap. I love, this is my favorite. See the sparkles? Valentine's, Christmas, Easter, more glitter, and Christmas, it's adorable. And then she also found a copy of McCall's Needlework and Crafts from back in the 70s. I don't know if they still make it, they probably do. But, um, so it had these two killer sweaters on the front and I'm like, I need that. And she was gonna make me color copies, but I was like, wait a minute, I bet I can find it on eBay. And I did. Voila. These two sweaters are everything. So now as you can see the magazine, <laughs> it was dry rotted. So I'm gonna have to pick out, um, cause there's more sweaters that I love. Not, look at these graphics from the seventies. This is so good, so good. Um, I'm gonna see if I can. I should have marked it, but I didn't. Also, back in the day, this was a dollar twenty-five, which is nuts. Okay. Um, oh, look at the suit. This is <laughs> this is amazing. So there's crochet, needlepoint, knitting, weaving, all kinds of things. I honestly, I think I'm gonna buy. Try to buy one of these. Oh wait, is there sewing? And they're sewing. I will never find this sweater. So I'm not even gonna waste time looking for it. There's lots, there's like a million projects in this. So I'm gonna go through, find what I like, color copy it because that magazine is not gonna live much longer. <laughs> it's come to the end of its rapidly um, diminishing life. Okay. Circle. Look this up. I'm not even going to do an infomercial about it. Filter, flavor, in one, inexpensive, life-changing. I like to drink water. It wasn't even that I didn't like water. Um, Cass got one first. She hates drinking water. She hates drinking anything. It's so weird. She never drinks. Um, this has completely replaced soda and everything. I'm not doing an infomercial. Look it up. I'll put a link. Also, candy. Oh, I didn't bring the pajamas downstairs. She got me, she found me two um, Ray Dunn pajama sets. One says Mummy and what's it going to say? Stay spooky, but something. Anyway, the cutest pants sets. If, um, if I remember, I'll insert pictures so you can see. And then she also found this Happy Holidays which I'm too excited. I love it. And then I was waiting to do this video so I could put these up on my shelf. Jessie um, found me this Beware mug with the black inside, which is everything. And this give thanks that I love. So now I can put them up with the rest of the collection. I'm so excited. So excited. So there's some gifts. I'm trying to sprinkle around to make it interesting. Okay, so here is, I am participating in the um, Spooky Socks Make Along. Uh, Nitty Natty, Crazy Sock Lady, there's a whole bunch of people. I'm trying to remember the name of the yarn company that sponsored. Just search the hashtag um, Spooky Socks Make Along now and you'll see. So. I actually, it's funny, I made this bag first. I was like, oh, this is gonna be my spooky socks bag. <laughs> and I made it and I was like, oh God. I knew that people would wanna buy it. So I was like, okay, fine. So I just put it in the shop. It's a drawstring bag with the handle. And of course it sold immediately. So that's officially <laughs> out of the picture. So I made me another one and this one I actually have more fabric. So it's a little dumpling bag. This got this, <laughs> I call it a freaked out kitty. I don't know if it really is a freaked out kitty. It could just be a fat kitty. It looks like it got put in the dryer without a dryer sheet and I love it. 
and the is this one of this year yeah this is some of this year's fabric for the cake oh, super cute little skeleton is so cute and nerdy and this is the beetlejuice sock set that cast eyes for cg cg yarns and i had actually crocheted the sock i had almost finished it just so you can see the difference in the same yarn <laughs> with a crocheted sock and a knitted sock so we know I don't I think I've talked about this I actually want to wear my socks with shoes so that's this is why I learned to knit socks because I needed a thinner sock the crochet makes more like slippers but see and so this isn't a self striping yarn it's a half and half skein so it's half black half white so you get a little bit of overlap and that overlap creates like this smoky thingy that happens. And of course, if it was a different color, it would make, you know, a different little zigzag, but I like it. I think it's spooky and I'm very excited about this with these adorable progress keepers that are also from this year. They were there specifically for the Black Mountain show the end of October, but if we have anything left, we'll throw it in the shop, of course. So you'll be able to purchase if you're not local. But you know us, we don't do tons of the same thing because we both um, like variation. Okay, there's Spoon Sock Make Along. My scarf from the Inside Crochet Magazine is coming right along. I have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I just say Make Along? If I did, I'm ridiculous. This is Inside Crochet Magazine. Not the last issue, but the issue before that, the scarf was in there and it's super long. So you can uh, double it around and the colors, as you can see, are incredible. And this actually, so every year, uh, for a few years, I would do like a temperature blanket or some sort of blanket using Barocco Vintage, which is a uh, mostly wool with a little bit of acrylic yarn that's made by Barocco. It's super soft, but it's completely washable and dryable. So it's what I would make blankets out of. It's my preferred for making blankets because it's easy laundering. So I have tons and tons of leftovers from blankets. And I was like, that's what I'm going to use for the scarf. And it's been great. Um, some I've had to vary the colors a little bit because I you know would run out of one color so they're not exactly like the pattern calls for but close I need a stitch marker for us to put one in when I left the shop this is another one of our this year stitch markers a little pumpkin with a witch hat so I'm very excited this one if I've if I keep working on it, this one would be done in just a day, but you know how I do. So we'll see. We'll see. I actually haven't made any more dish rags, which is crazy. Um, these are Cass's socks that I started for her with the Wandering Flock. So we know I finished one, but it's got that where you do the rib separate and attach it sewing. So on this one, I wanted to do the attached ribbing so I'm gonna I'm really liking how this is coming out so I'm probably gonna take this off and redo it like this that's probably what's gonna happen so there's that oh my god Donna from Black Mountain Yarn Shop um, the owner is amazing she gifted me a Gigi made it notions dish um, that's one that is so cute and I'm so excited. I remember when they first came out, but somehow I missed, I missed it. And now I have one and I'm so excited. And I also inherited from Donna at Black Mountain, this lovely project bag that is by Twig and Horn with all of these killer pins on it. And there were so many goodies in here. There's a set of Chowdo needles. There's a ball of self-striping yarn. Uh, the childhood needles are actually, they're DPNs, still in their little pouch. There's scissors, like this bag of random notions and stitch markers. I'm so excited. And now that I have so many pins, I'm thinking about doing 
a pen panel option on all of our project bags. Like you can choose to get a clear vinyl that's fabric edge panel on one or both sides of your project bag. So you can display your pins. I think it'll be awesome. I'm very excited. I'm also toying with a recycled flannel crocheted shawl. But I don't like this flannel. It's too thin. Like it's a Chico's flannel shirt. I want like a rugged hefty. So I'll keep hitting thrift shops for that. Um, I'm just going to quickly flash some of the recycled t-shirt bags that I made to go um, in the shop in Chop Shop Stitch. That are pretty great. These are lined, box bottomed, soft bags. Um, oh, and this is adorable. So Crystal, my daughter, who doesn't craft at all now, <laughs> this was her first cross-stitched thing. It was My Little Pony. And I loved it. And I was going to make something for her. She said she didn't want it. So, of course, I'm keeping it. So I made it in a pocket on this cute little My Little Pony project bag. And I love it. Just adorable. Zipper lined. And now I'll have her little cross-stitch thing with me forever, which I would have anyway, but now it's in functional something that I can use. Here's a little peek at a couple of things that will be at the show. And Cass, for both, for all of these, Cass has dyed um, yarn sets to match. This glittery snowman with plaid lining. This one is so funny, and I didn't even realize that they were taking a selfie when I bought the fabric. I just thought <laughs> it was a zombie and a ghost or whatever, a skeleton and a ghost. But they're actually taking a selfie. How funny is that? There's the bag. This was actually a door panel that you put together and quilt for your door for Halloween. It's a pretty inside. Um, and then this one was great. I um, My red barn fabric that I've used in several things. I turned it horizontal and turned it into a bookshelf for these spooky book fabric that I had. Adorable. I'm sure that one will sell super fast. And then people will want more and actually have enough to do three more, I think. So that'll be good. This! So excited about this. Um, it's our first, like, legit grown-up crochet publication. It is a magazine that comes out of um, Edinburgh. Yep, Scotland. It's called Moret. Um, it's not the typical, the crochet magazines and books that you see for us. This is a, a nice, sophisticated, I don't want to show, you know, all the things. Pick one up. Tell your local yarn shop about it. Um, so we can get more crochet representation into our favorite yarn shops. I'm so excited about this and so proud as a crocheter to have that. It's amazing. Okay, because crochet is not all bright colored granny squares. That's all I'm saying about that. Okay, this I made because I love Krispy Kreme and I had this little smidgen of a Krispy Kreme t-shirt, the hot and ready sign. Um, or sorry, hot now sign. And I had the red and white stripe fabric and the green, so I had to. I love it. And it sold immediately as well. So you got donut fabric on the inside. And I'm actually going to put a little donut stitch marker in there for her. Because just, I just love it. Very excited about that. When I was at Goodwill looking for flannel for this scarf, I found the cutest little knit sweater. How cute is this? And I laundered it. It's... It's a large. It's too little for me and my arms. I'm gonna block it and see if we can get it to fit. If not, I may turn it into a vest. How cute would this be with a white button-up shirt? Um, and if not that, then maybe a pillow. I don't know, but how cute is it? For real, for real. Okay. Is that all the things? That was super fast. I'm super proud of myself. That is, that's all the things. Hooray! Just double checking. That is actually all of the things. I hope that y'all have the most amazing week. Um, and of course, I will try to post again next week. Um, now that I know that I just need to do it before 
I start sewing because if I start sewing, it's a wrap. I'm super excited to see everybody's projects. Everybody's been posting with make alongs and stuff. I will be casting on for the uh, mystery knit along uh, Stephen West. God help me, because y'all know the only thing I know how to knit is friggin' socks. So we'll see. I'm sure <laughs> I'm a bit overzealous. But the girls at the shop <laughs> will help, of course. I'm actually excited about it. So um, I'll be posting updates on that as we go along. So have a wonderful rest of the week. Um, and I love you guys. I'll see you. Bye.